I need more coffee. I need more coffee. Needed more coffee. It's Sunday, the Lord's Day, and we got a tutorial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, everybody? It's the Big E. First and foremost, I want to thank you for stopping by today's video. Today, we are going to be talking about upgrading and controlling the quality of your cam for streams. And also with that, the technique that you learn from this, you'll be able to utilize that for even just making your games look a little better as well. A couple things that I wanna point out before starting this video. First and foremost, this is going to be diving more into like the filters section of OBS and, and Streamlabs OBS, which I'll get to in a second. But I did just recently put out a best OBS settings for higher quality. So if you wanna actually check out what settings to use for your OBS or Streamlab OBS, you can go check out that video in the description down below. But basically the objective that we're trying to do today is how do we make this right here look kind of like this? How do we make this look better? What you see right now is like what I stream. This is what I would look like on my stream right now. Now by pointing that out, yes, I have a Sony A7S II with a Sigma 24 millimeter 1.4 lens. And I know a lot of people are probably like already freaking out like what is that? Some people are looking on Amazon right now, seeing how much this costs and they're just freaking out because they think that they need to get this slow down you don't need this camera this is just one of the cameras that I have this is the camera that I am currently using you can get a lot of quality out of a lot of smaller suggested cameras I don't know what everybody out there is using but you're gonna be able to accomplish a lot of what we show today with whatever you have you're just gonna really have to dive into the settings of your own equipment and kind of like figure it out yourself and then use this tutorial in OBS once you get there also don't feel that you only have to be using a DSLR camera for this, even with a webcam, you're going to be able to do some of the things that we're discussing today. At the end of the day, this tutorial is not to make your stuff look the best. It is to make it look better and more satisfying than what you currently have. First and foremost, aside from OBS, getting good lighting is key. Let me just show you the difference in between just having one ring light right here on the side versus not having this ring light. Ring light on, ring light off. Right out the gate with webcam or DSLR camera, having good lighting is crucial to being able to have have a high quality image come out of your camera for your streams. No need to go overboard. You don't need tons of light around the room. I barely have this thing turned up. It's just one ring light off to the side. I have this ring light listed in my Amazon store down below in the stream if you want to check out which one I'm using. But it's pretty simple. It's just a, a nice LED ring light off to the side coming down at an angle turned on at about 15% for me. Now once you have lighting down for yourself, the next objective is controlling your cam or camera before you start messing with it in OBS. Now, now what I mean by that, if you check this out, this is what you see right now because of the OBS settings I have engaged. This is actually what's coming out of the camera right now. So I don't want to get too in depth in talking about cameras, you know, talking about ISO, shutter, or aperture. Although I feel like these are things that if you guys really want to up your quality that over time you should learn to just kind of have a little bit more respect for the tool that you are using for your streams and just make it better overall. Today, I just want to try to make this as simple as possible for people to understand. What we want to try to accomplish from your camera and webcam is to not have the device or tool control the settings before it gets into OBS what I mean by that is I don't want my Sony saying okay this needs X amount of saturation it needs to be sharpened this much I want to be able to control that in OBS myself I want the picture from here from my Sony coming into my computer to be as flat as possible not too much contrast not too much saturation not over sharpened so one of the things that you guys can do is you can go into your settings some cameras out there have picture profiles or color profiles a lot of cameras if not you can actually go and control like the sharpness and turn it all the way down to zero. You can turn the saturation all the way down to zero, turn the contrast all the way down to zero. I think mostly every camera has that option. Same thing with webcams as well. I'm pretty sure in like OBS or Streamlabs OBS or even in certain webcam settings, you can go into like the coloring and whatnot and you can tune down, you know, the saturation, all that type of stuff. So that way you have more control over it in the filters in OBS. So again, in short, the objective here is whatever cam or camera that you you're using before you have your image in OBS you want the flattest picture possible you want to have control over it in OBS and not tell the camera how to control it for you because when you do even though it looks like this you can make it look like this ta-da that was super fucking cheesy
So you got good lighting. That's good. Now you've changed the settings in your camera or your webcam to make it the dullest picture profile possible. Okay, so diving into OBS. So I'm in OBS right now. Hi, this is this is me. This is my recording scene that I use for OBS. Things might look a little different for you guys. I know some people out there use Streamlabs OBS. Some use uh, regular OBS. This is OBS Live, like the, the stream elements mix. I can't suggest this thing enough. I think it's amazing. I love OBS Live. So the magic sauce that I want to show you guys today is filters in combination with lighting, making sure that the picture that's coming out of your camera or cam is the dullest possible, and then bringing it in here to do filters, your quality jump is going to be insane. So I have my webcam titled as DSLR here. So if you actually right click on the webcam and go to filters, you bring up these little effect filters. Once you bring up these effect filters, you can hit this little plus icon here, and this is where you apply the certain things for the quality upgrade of your stream. I'm just gonna deselect these because I want these to be my original because I like these settings. But the first thing I would do if your picture is like to the dullest settings possible is I would do a color correction. So we're gonna add a color correction and I'm gonna put touch. Again, this is where you control the settings yourself. For the 50th time, camera, you don't want to do it. We wanna do it right here where you guys see all this. We wanna control the saturation. We wanna control the gamma. We wanna control the contrast. So what I'm about to do is gonna be a personal preference. You can control how much saturation and whatnot you want. First thing I like to personally do is I like to add a little saturation. Again, not too much. I don't like to bump it up all the way like this. I like to just give it a little bit more saturation where you can start seeing my skin color. You can start seeing a little bit more realism of my hat color. And then I like to bring the gamma down a little bit second. And then that's where I start messing with the contrast a little bit. And the contrast is going to kind of make the colors come out a little bit more. It's going to make the darkers a little bit more dark. It's just going to make things a little sharper. And we haven't even added sharpen yet. So again, this is just where you kind of like fine tune your, your set to yourself. I'm going to bring a little more saturation, a little bit more contrast, but I still want kind of shadows to show up and I don't want to be oversaturated. You want to give it a more realistic lifelike look. So I'd say that looks pretty good right there. What do you guys think? Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this plus icon down here in the corner and I'm going to click it and then I'm gonna hit sharpen. What I like to do with the sharpening, and also here's a little hack for like focusing your camera. I like to have a scene that's zoomed in like this. First and foremost, you can see here, this is how I focus myself. I'm not focused, focus. Side note, if you're using a DSLR, I personally suggest to manually focus yourself because we haven't been using these cameras and these DSLRs for a long time for streaming. And just having that focus motor run in your lens and camera the whole time while you're streaming these eight, nine, 10 hour stream sessions, I don't trust it. I would just highly suggest that if you want your camera to last for a long time, take as much work off of its back as possible. When you manually focus, you sharpen yourself out a lot more. It works a lot better. It's a lot smoother in my opinion. So again, using that technique that I just showed for manually focusing, uh, I'm gonna like kind of make a little zoom in screen. Let me just show you real quick the impact of, of sharpening. So this is sharpening turned all the way down. And then as you see, as we turn it up, you can see in the big picture, like everything's getting a lot sharper, a lot more grainy, but you can see in the smaller picture, which is more realistic to what they'll be seeing, that it gets a little too sharpened. So you want to make sure that you're sharpening in a little bit, giving it a little extra pop, but nothing too crazy that will make it too sharpened and it'll make it look pixelated and look like crap. That looks pretty good there. Now the sharpen is obviously an option for people. You don't really have to use it. I truly believe if you adjust your color correction properly using like contrast and good lighting, you are going to make enough sharpness out of that yourself. It will look great. One thing that I know some streamers use and that I did use for a while until I just wanted to get more of this natural look, they use a thing called LUT. So if you hit this little plus arrow down here and go to apply LUT, click on that, go to path. You can use default LUTs that they have, or you can go online to find like kind of like film LUTs. I know there's a couple sources out there, but let's just do like teal lows, orange highs, hit open. So what it does is this, what you can do is you can kind of like bring that down and kind of give it a, a little bit more of that like, I don't know, epic, epic film look. Lut off, lut on. I'm not really a big fan of LUTs. I just know some people use them. So once you find the settings that you want, you just save them and that's the filters that you have for your stuff. And again, you can take this technique and use it for your game as well. Let me load up and go.
Jesus Christ. All right, so here we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I'm going to right click on the source for the game, Modern Warfare. I'm gonna hit filters, hit that plus icon in the corner and hit color correction. Maybe in this situation, desaturate a little bit and then add a little bit more contrast. Again, this is just gonna be kind of personal preference. Whatever you wanna do for yourself, just always remember what I mentioned earlier that less is more sometimes. When you're learning these new features, you get really amped, you get excited and you really overdo things. Let's see what a LUT would look like on this. LUT, browse, oh yeah. Kind of takes away those blues. I use the red isolated LUT. Kind of takes away the, some of those blues. And again, you know, you don't want to over sharpen it to where it looks like pixelated. You want to just kind of like add a little extra oomph that will look great on stream look great on like a smaller image like this. I always like to test things on these smaller images because again, if it looks like crap on here, a lot of people are watching your streams and whatnot on phones and small tablets and devices. They'll basically give you an understanding of like what it will look like. So here's a little before and after what the game could look like by adding a couple extra filters. Here's the before, here's the after. Makes things pop a little bit more, gives it a little bit more detail, makes it look unique to yourself. And overall, I think that's the biggest thing to take from this is a lot of this stuff is gonna be unique to you. And that's what you need to figure out with this. And don't overthink things. Don't think that because you don't have this quality right now that people aren't going to come. You don't need this quality to become successful at these things. You just need to create a good, community with viewers. You need to go out there, stream, and have fun. Create content that you want to enjoy. But I figured if you guys did want to up your quality a little bit, I would make this tutorial. So let me know in the comments down below if this helped at all in any way, shape, or form. Again, I have an Amazon store linked down below if you would like to upgrade your cam quality. If you'd like to take that first step into a DSLR as a cam, be sure to check out the stuff that I recommend in there. Make sure you guys stop on over by Twitch sometime and, and say hi. Also, be sure to check me out on Twitter and Instagram. If you have any interest in following my journey through all this stuff as well, I have a vlog channel you can check out and subscribe to to keep up to date with that. Other than that, that's about all I have for you guys today. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Thumbs up the video if this helped in any way, shape, or form. Subscribe, turn on those notifications. That's all I got for you guys today. I'm out. Peace.